Hey, it's Ellie. Welcome to the very first episode of Planet Zoo Beta. Though, to be honest, I don't think there's going to be any more episodes of Planet Zoo Beta because, frankly, this game is really hard to record. It's glitchy. It crashes all the time. It's very... It's just not in a place where I really feel like I can do any actual recording with it. But, in spite of that... I've built a zoo, and in spite of the bugs, I'm going to talk about what I think of the game. Not including the bugs, obviously. It's a beta. It's got to have some bugs in it. So, you start off and you get this little entranceway, and that's it. Which, by the way, I'm in franchise mode if you didn't realize there is a scenario. It's a really short one. It's basically just a tutorial, and frankly, it was awful, so we're not going to talk about that. It wasn't awful for, like, gameplay elements or anything. It's just... Honestly, I'm very particular about my simulation games, and there's a lot of things that I don't like to have in my simulation games, and I know I'm weird for this, but scenarios is one of them. I don't like the narrative scenarios in a simulation game. I find them horrible. The jokes are horrible. I don't even want to talk about the jokes that they tried to make in this scenario. I, I can say for 100% certainty that I am never going to play the scenario really in depth. I, I'm just not. I'll probably do it once in a while, but I doubt if I ever get through that game in like the first year that it's officially out. I probably won't even have half the scenarios done by then. And the other thing I know for certainty is that I'm not going to be playing franchise mode either because I hate it. And it has nothing to do with uh, how the game works. It's just I, not to my taste to do these kind of things. So basically, like I said, you started with this, then you've got uh, nothing in your zoo. You start with like thirty thousand dollars or something i don't remember how much it was but it wasn't a lot and the reason i'm never gonna play for franchise mode is because i don't like having money constraints in these games i'm a builder that's what i do <laughs> so when i pile 30 rocks on top of each other just to get like a slightly different shape on the top that costs me way more money than it's worth and so it's really hard for me to play in money constraint games. I just don't like it. It's not to my taste. Again, nothing wrong with the game, but not to my taste. And the other thing about franchise mode is that you have this uh, animal trading market, which for the record right now is insanely glitchy, like awful glitchy. But the problem with the animal market is that you only have the animals available that are on the market that other people have put on. So if you go to some of them, there's, you know, two or three, I guess that was a bad example, but a lot of them, there's not that many actual animals for sale in the market. Like here's, here's the lemurs and they're all male. So when you can only have one male in your group of lemurs, you can't really make a lemur group right now because there's not any females on the market. So I also don't like playing with that constraint because it feels like it just limits my creativity so much. If I can't make a lemur exhibit, then I have to pick something else and that's frustrating to me. So, but besides those two things, the scheme is amazing. Even in franchise mode, it's so good. It's so good. So, I should probably uh, show you my actual zoo. I, um, the first thing I did actually was build this. And I used just the blueprints that I gave for the staff buildings because I was being lazy and I just wanted to get the buildings down to figure out how to play. Funny thing, in the beginning of the beta release, there was no animals on the animal market at all because I think Frontier just like forgot to upload their animals so that we could start with some animals to make our own like market with through the community 
but we couldn't make the market if we didn't have any animals to start with and the market was empty until Frontier uploaded them like halfway through the day there was fun suddenly animals on the market so that was a fun time but anyway this is a little staff building you kind of have to hide it from guests like you've got this cool feature that shows negative impact on guests and you can see each building has a sort of radius around it that if the guests get into this radius then they're gonna have the bad thoughts about your zoo how they can see all the staff facilities so like i've also hidden one here it's another staff area and i put one over here because i really needed a water purifier over here to deal with some of my exhibits and then I got lazy and I didn't want to build more around it. Not so much lazy though, honestly. It's because I'm broke in this game. I'm so bad at money management. Anyway, so after I built the little staff enclosure here, I went through and I built a turtle exhibit. And let me tell you something I found out about turtles. They breed. They breed like 12 babies in one litter. And here's something else about the game. So you can't sell animals while they're juvenile, as far as I can tell anyway, from the quick research I did to see why I couldn't sell the animal. And turtles don't become mature until age 25. So this is a 20 year old juvenile turtle that I have in my exhibit that I've had for 20 years because my park is at year 23 right now, and like, yeah, in my, uh, in my animal list, I'm pretty sure, let's see, where are the turtles? Down here. See, it's 20 years old, and it labels the turtle as an infant in this list. Infants. It's a 20 year old infant. I mean, let's be real. I know people like that in real life, but this is a turtle and I just want to sell it on the market and it's just here forever. It's just, it's never going to go away. I have to wait five more years of the turtle's life to sell it. This exhibit is really dirty. Habitat, actually. These are called habitats now, which is confusing because in the old zoo tycoon, the exhibits were the fenced in areas. So, yeah, let's just call the keeper to the habitat because he'll come and clean up the things. But, yeah, the turtles were the first thing that I did, and um, now I've got 14 turtles in this exhibit. They're still happy uh, as long as. There's no adults in the group, so their social group is good. Uh, there's only two adults. But once they all turn into adults, then I gotta sell them quicker. They'll start fighting, I think. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure how turtles fight. It takes them, like, an age to get across the habitat to their bed. Hurry up and clean this mess, zookeeper. But anyway... Um, they have low welfare right now because the habitat is dirty and also the shelter. This is not what I wanted to make the shelter. It's supposed to be like ending here, this rock around, and that's big enough for two turtles, but now there's 14 turtles and I didn't want to make the entire exhibit a shelter. So yeah, other than that, the turtles are nice. The graphics are really good. I really enjoy the way that the animals move and everything. Look, there's even a rainbow on this water sprinkler right here in the sun. It's great. I've lost three grand since I started the game in play mode. <laughs> Let's go back to pause for a minute while I show you the rest of the zoo. Okay, and the second thing I did was build this snake house, which actually doesn't have more than one snake in it so yeah it's supposed to be a reptile house uh, but the other animal in it now is a scorpion and before it was a frog which is an amphibian so <laughs> reptile maybe like one reptile <laughs> but anyway I think the house looks really cool on the outside I kind of I made this it's um 
like multiple pieces like there's just the snake piece and the stick and the leaf but I don't know I think it looks like a cool sign so that's pretty cool and then you go in here and there's some exhibits right here uh, my boa constrictor is actually right here in the view for once this is the first time I've ever seen him in there it's a girl her name is Margarita I think but anyway <laughs> Yep, here's my boa constrictor exhibit, and then uh, here's the rest of the building. It's pretty simple. I didn't really decorate that much in here. But yeah, there's a frog, because there used to be frogs in here, and now there's not. There's scorpions. I don't know where they are. See, I can't actually see them in here. Like, there's four scorpions in here, I think. Huh? I don't know. Like I said, that's the first time I ever saw the boa constrictor, so I'm not surprised I've never seen the frogs or the scorpions. But anyway, overall I think it looks pretty cool. I like the way the exhibits work with the little animals. They're pretty simple. You have to research them and make their habitat better, but it's pretty easy overall. What's going on here? Many animals have low welfare. Oh, it's the turtles. Because their habitat was dirty. Yeah, so next we got the uh, Nile Monitor Lizards. Close that too. These are actually my second pair. The first pair has already died of old age. And I'm pretty excited because I let these ones mate. So after the turtle fiasco, I um, immediately put contraceptives on all my animals to prevent that from happening again. And it's just this little toggle button right here on the side. It's pretty easy to do, so that's good. <laughs> but I decided to let my turtles mate because I don't they don't have a lot of mates when they or offspring when they mate. So. Yeah, my turtle is, uh, my Nile monitor is pregnant and she's due in August and I'm very excited because this is a very controlled birth setting this time. I didn't just leave the turtle exhibit and come back to, <laughs> that's really what happened. I just didn't look at it for like a little while and then there was 14 turtles in, in my exhibit. Look at them all. I just can't get over how many turtles there are. Anyway, I need to I need to stop. So yeah, the I've kind of been bummed out by my first couple of habitat animals because they don't actually like plants that much, like at all, in their exhibit. And um, you have to be very careful about your plants coming from the same continent and biome, which is really cool. I like that you have to be specific like that, otherwise it gives them a sort of, I don't know if it's negative per se, but it, it costs like way more for the plant coverage uh, if they don't like it, and it just like has a huge red exclamation part point here on the list to tell you that you got it all wrong. But I did try to make it look nice in there. I built this huge rock wall to hide my staff buildings. Not that you had to because there's just the radius thing, but I wanted to because it looks better. And I guess seem to like these habitats. I have made all the habitats slightly too big so far because these are all pretty small animals, don't need a lot of space. But I'm glad I made the turtle at, uh, exhibit better, bigger because there's a lot of them now. Also, I keep saying turtle, please don't be mad at me. It's tortoise. I know it's tortoise. It's just a habit, okay? So, next we go to the pea falls. And this is probably my favorite exhibit so far. Even though, again, it's not as good as I wish it could be. Because the pea falls don't like all that many plants either. <laughs> I was hoping to make it a cool garden place. But yeah, I think it looks pretty cool on the outside like this. Um, I put this little water area with a waterfall through special effects. We can play this for a minute here. 
and the best part about it is that the guests can go through the exhibit so they can walk right, walk right next to the peafowls and see them. Here's my male. I think I do have one female who's not on contraceptives because I'm trying to mate them as well. They can have really big groups as long as there's not too many males in there. So I'm just going to sell off the males when they get mature enough and um, save myself some money of buying new animals. But yeah, I really like the way this exhibit turned out. I've got the donation boxes here and I made this little thing with signs and this shelter area, which I like. People are yelling because the exhibit is a little dirty. Yeah, there is still a pretty major bug with feeders. Um, you can see this is my large food bowl that's supposed to be full, but it's not. The feeder, the zookeepers don't refill it if there is an enrichment feeder in the exhibit, which there is. It's this thing right here for the peafowls, and it's kind of a bummer because for some reason, the peafowls don't have an issue getting enough food from it, but most of the other animals do have an issue with the food enrichment because it's like a slow feeder, so it's not meant to just get nutrients. It's meant to, I don't know, entertain them, I guess. So, yeah, look, the zookeeper is coming in right now. He's just going to come and fill up the enrichment feeder, and then he's going to leave the actual feeder empty. I've had a couple animals almost starve to death because of this glitch, which is not great, but I guess I'm working around it as well as I can. So yeah, that's pretty cool. We're going to go back to play now because now I'm down five grand from where I started. <laughs> great. Then we come right over here and this is my first in-ground exhibit that I tried. I think it, again, it turned out okay. I'm definitely going to get better at these exhibits. It's just, I spent like four hours on this exhibit, no joke, just trying to get the, the ground to work with me and then the barrier to work with me afterwards. So in this exhibit, we've got some gem spots. And this exhibit is way bigger than it needs to be for them because I'm planning to put in African elephants. Or I was. Until I realized that there's only ever like two on the market and they're very expensive for conservation points. And I really haven't earned any conservation points yet because I don't have any animals to give into the wild or anything. I need them for my zoo <laughs> so I can make money. <laughs> which I'm still not making any profit. I've just been surviving off of Lewins somehow. But anyway, these guys are pretty cool. I like the way they run. We're going to play it for now. Probably none of them will run, but you know. I built this shelter for them right here, which again, elephant that I'm hoping to get in soon. Um, I don't know. This is the first really like construction habitat I did fully. The little peacock one I don't really count because it was like two pieces of roof but these guys needed quite a bit of space so I made that for them and I think it looks nice. They lay on the beds which is cool right in the hay piles. Oh there's another one over here I didn't even notice. Yeah it's very serene in here and Again, they've got the big feeder. They don't have an enrichment feeder, so the zookeeper seems to be okay with refilling this one. It's just if we have the enrichment feeder and the regular food bowl at the same time. But yeah, despite the fact that you can look all around here, you can also go down here to the glass place. I built this for no reason, but I love it, actually. I spent probably an hour of the four hours of this habitat trying to make this area work with the ground and like my stairs and tunnel through the earth but I really love how this turned out here I think it looks so cool to see the exhibit from down here and be like face to face with the animals and the path works really well in the end 
It was a nightmare, but in the end it was okay. So yeah. Oh, now I'm down to $300. Hooray. I'm going to go broke again. Not going to be able to build any more exhibits. So yeah, you can go around here as well on this side. Um, I don't want to get too close to this with my pathways because then the guests will get mad. But you know. This is a work in progress right here. It's a little spider house. There's two spider groups in here. This one is the Brazilian wandering spider and this one is the Goliath bird eater. They have horrible exhibit because I don't have any um, layouts to add for them because I'm still doing research for them so I can make their exhibit better. That's the thing with the habitats. You can't research them until they're in the uh, exhibit and then once they're in the exhibit, they have really low welfare because your exhibit sucks and you have to research them and it takes time. But luckily, they're okay until then. They usually don't get any protesters if they're just like 50% welfare. I think it's just lower than 50 that the animal protesters come in. I haven't really figured out the range yet. I don't know if it's written somewhere. I haven't looked it up or anything, but yeah. Next is a very fun exhibit. We've got the lemur exhibit. Where are all the lemurs? <laughs> Wait, seriously, where did all the lemurs go? Oh, here's one. Here, let's play it for a minute. We'll probably see them more often. Yeah, it took me a while to get up my lemur population to like four. I think there's four lemurs in here. I have, again, two of them off contraceptive so that they can breed, hopefully. Where are the other lemurs? Are they all sleeping? Two of them are sleeping in here. Aww. They're so cute. Little lemurs. Yeah, I was afraid this was going to be like a jumping point, but it's not. It works fine. And they seem happy. What's cool about the animals that the guests can go into the habitat with is they never get stressed out from humans being with them. So it's pretty cool. This guest is wondering when the baby Nile monitor is due, which is my lizard, which is cool. Yeah, um, that's my zoo. Those are most of my thoughts about it. I like the game. It's really great. The research um, is really well done. I like the way they did that instead of like just unlocking things over time or just having one research project after another. Like now you actually get to assign vets to research. If research is really important to you, you can go through and assign all your vets to do it. You've got all these diseases that you can research too, um, which is Cool. I haven't done any of them yet because I'm just trying to make sure my animals are good enough. But And then the mechanics get to research things like themes and food shops and shelters and all that, which is really awesome. I like the way they did that too because you can pick and choose what's coming next, what things are important to you. The staff management is good. Pro tip. Make sure your zookeepers and mechanics are assigned to work zones and that all your habitats and stuff are in work zones because otherwise they probably won't get taken care of. I learned that the hard way. Um, yeah, I, I like this game a lot though. I am so excited for sandbox mode when it comes out. I'm just gonna play that forever. I already have 30 hours into the game and it came out on Tuesday, so that's, uh, yeah. It's Friday, by the way, when I'm recording this, so it's only been like three days. And overall, I know I'm gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of this game when the full version comes out, so definitely look forward to seeing videos at least later on it 
like I said, I probably won't do any more videos on this now. So I think that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed my zoo. If you are looking for a zoo game, this is definitely the best one of all of them. I played Zoo Tycoon a ton when I was a kid. Like, that was my game, and to have this now is just infinitely better and exciting, and I, I'm gonna love it to death forever, so... So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos of Planet Zoo, like I said, when it comes out. Or I'll also be posting my Planet Coaster videos at some point if I can actually get them to render and not have corrupt video footage. Hooray! <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye!